Hey everybody and welcome back to another maintenance video where I'm hanging out doing some maintenance on the 150 here. It's kind of turning into a weekly event mainly because this tank is just so planted. We've got so many plants in here and so many things to do on a weekly basis that it's just kind of turning into a weekly event. I'll do my best to try and get one of these out every weekend. There'll probably be some weeks where we don't do it and we maybe have a different video, but that's kind of the schedule I'm on right now. And if you like it, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Or if you desperately need me to make something else, maybe leave it in the comments below. I don't know. It's been a pretty eventful week. I've got a lot of plants growing around here doing a bunch of weird stuff that uh, desperately need trimming and things. And uh, this tank has got so many plants in it that uh, I've got a lot of things to move and kind of shimmy around and pull out and replant and reposition and stuff like that, uh, which I think is gonna be an ongoing thing for quite a while until I decide to cool it a little bit and uh, <laughs> maybe move some plants to some other aquariums or something. I'm not 100% sure what my plan is at this point, but uh, I honestly am getting a lot of uh, enjoyment out of you know, playing in this aquascape, having this many plants in here, and uh, I'm overall getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. I'm even at the point now where I'm having to float certain uh, plants around that uh, they just don't have a home yet. So um, I would pay attention to this plant up here, because as soon as this plant that's floating around up here disappears, uh, I'd prepare yourself for an aquascaping adventure because that that plant right there, I'm not going to tell you what it is. If you could figure it out, kudos to you. But if you could figure out what that plant is, it's going to be going in uh, one of the other 120s that it's been turning into a really long project uh, just to get everything staged so that I'm ready to swap that tank out. And I think I might call on somebody to come help me out we'll see we'll see if he has time to come help me out but uh, uh i'm gonna see if i can maybe get a helper to come help out for that maybe yeah maybe no i don't know okay first things first a little limnophila aromatica has got to come out we're gonna make a little space here guys basically at the point where I'm having to make space. So I had to pull a little bit of it out back here, right back in there, to make a little space for this Rotella, Bangladesh, and this Sphericarpa that's right here. Now, the Limnophila is starting to grow the way I want it. Again, these side shoots are kind of the best, in my opinion. Uh, like, see this one here. See how different the side shoot is compared, so this is the side shoot compared to the main body of the plant. I'm actually gonna take that main part off and uh, split it, and then I'll replant these little healthy ones. So I'm just separating those up top here on the top of the tank and then uh, I'll replant the ones that I really want to keep. Now, I wish that I could give a really detailed explanation of why this happens with the Limnophila, uh, but I've never really been able to find uh, a solid paper that explains why it does this. Um, I, it just does. So this is really one of those things that's like, it's just from experience with this plant that it does this. And you know, if anybody has some kind of documentation as to why this is, and then if I could set up something to help kind of verify whether that's 100% true or not, um, That'd be awesome, you know, if you got something like that, post it down in the comments. Why the Limnophila has these, like, really healthy side shoots. I'm uh, not 100% sure why. Wish I knew. So these ones back here, 
I'm actually just going to trim and trim. Uh, let's see. Because this is the main real estate I want right back there. I'm still just going to have to pull the stuff out that's in the way to get back there. Oops. Snap that one off. I don't normally do that. It happens, though. That's why I normally use my hands to pull plants, but there's just so much stuff going on back here that it's a little easier to use my tongs right now. Now, of course, everything that uh, is not going to get replanted up in the display up here is just going to get a plant weight on it and thrown down uh, under the growing lights in the sump. So it's basically not even going to, it's probably not even going to know that it left the tank because it's just going to be in the exact same water parameter. that it is now. It's just going to be over there. I'm going to pull this one. I think I'm going to make a decision. Oh, that was attached to something else. So, oh well. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this, this one right here, oh, broke it. In my experience, trying to replant that little broken nub is not going to do anything. I'm just gonna literally uh, get rid of that. Okay, grab this one down here. Gosh, this is normally easier to do just with my hands anyhow. Get down here. Just like pulling a weed in the garden, you gotta kind of get down in there and make sure that you're pulling from the root. And I do have a little bit of hair algae right here. Let's go ahead and swoop that up. A little hot tip for y'all, you know, if you see these little bits of hair algae that do kind of grow from time to time, because you end up with a little bit of, probably just a little bit of fish waste or something. I'm gonna do a little, little bit of vacuuming in here. Um, at some point soon clear up some of that stuff but you can always just get at it with the uh, tongs down here if you need to All right, let's get this plant out of here and yeah I think I'm going to trim that yeah and pull this one too because I'm going to plant those other nice looking ones right down in the front there. And my little scissors here. So this one has a little two little side shoots. So I'm actually just going to trim that, take the plant out, take that top out, be like, get out of here. I think I'm going to make the decision to just pull this one out. Yeah, you can see how like this tall stem here has this little side shoot growing down here. We're just going to allow the side shoot to take over the root system. And uh, that'll be pretty good. Um, actually, just going to trim that one too. This one has side shoots down here. I'm actually just going to trim right above the side shoot. This one, and there's one more, one more, there we go, starting to clear out some of this space here. So the goal here is to clear out some of the space, but also, you know, maintain the healthy, you know, healthy amount of the species. Like you don't really need to have, um, you know, like a hundred stems of something in a tank for it to have a good representation of what the plant is. Uh, something like this will be, you know, what, like 10, 12 stems, uh, and it'll 
occupy this little little pocket right here, this little area. And uh, you know, there'll be plenty to be a, a pretty solid little representation of the limnophila. You know, I don't, don't got to go totally crazy and just you know propagate everything all the time. So maybe this is a little tip that helps somebody out there that's maybe getting a little collectoritis like me in the collectoritis plants are all growing and wondering what to do so hopefully that's a little bit helpful now this rotella ramosaur is what's going to end up going back there now i've got a real tall one right here that's started finally splitting down there and uh, i don't think i'm going to move it yet i was thinking i was going to move it tonight but i think i'm going to wait um, until early next week I might be right about that, I might be wrong, but that's just kind of the thought that I'm having right now. Because looking at it, you know, I've got just a little bit growing down here, and it might not be enough just yet. But I'm basically like, I've got this stem, this stem, there's a little tiny stem here. And I think I'm going to move them back there, uh, obviously because we, we know it can grow very well in this system. Uh, I am a little skeptical of putting it all the way to the back though. You know, I feel like if I put it all the way to the back, it could easily uh, run into some slight issue and, you know, lose this plant, which I think this plant's like 25 bucks a stem right now or something. So definitely my goal is to continue to propagate it Now I'm thinking I'm going to change my mind in the middle of shooting a video. I think I'm going to change my mind and actually just cut it and plant it. Yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. But the first thing I want to do before that is I am getting some stuff is certainly collecting on this like scraggly part of the rock here. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this out with my toothbrush. I'm not sure if that's fish poop or substrate or what. So I'm gonna clear that out. I'm going to give a, a lovely home for this little bit of hair algae that's kind of accumulating back here. It's kind of one of the issues that I have when I get a tank that has this many species in it is that, you know, I'm definitely having to run a lot of fertilizer in this tank so um, any kind of waste if I kind of skip out on doing some vacuuming or something it's real easy for you know these little bits of hair algae to show up which is super annoying I do have to admit so like, can't we live in a world that just doesn't have algae but then again if we we're living in a world that didn't have any kind of algae or anything. We'd have no air to breathe, so I guess that's a I guess that's a reasonable trade-off, right? Okay. All right, so I've planned out what I'm going to do, my plan of attack with the Rotella here. I've got some tiny little pieces of plant weight that I've cut down, and I'm going to use those to attach to the middle portion of the Rotala, the Rotala Ramosaur here. Now, when you're cutting this plant, we want to cut, normally we would get an aerial root that looks like that right there. Those haven't showed up yet, and I normally don't trim plants that often that um, haven't sent out any aerial roots but this is just where we're at these days um, so we're going to have to trim that I'm going to replant it what am I going to do with this middle portion here so this middle portion right here I'm actually going to cut see where I'm at. Right above this root, 
right there. So I do have some roots coming off of this. Now, this is never going to be a good display piece because we're going to have this chunk right here. What I'm going to do is put these little tiny plant weights I made <laughs> onto it. And I didn't make these specifically for this. I actually just had cut these a while ago. Basically take one plant weight and cut it lengthwise and then you end up with two. My issue is that I have a lot of plant weights that are being utilized for something and I don't have a ton of them just lying around so I cut them in half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna lay it down in the front of the tank right where I can see it. So it's just right up here at the front and I'll be able to see if it sprouts and sends out new sprouts. If it sends out new sprouts, then I'll, I'll, I'll make a video of what to do on that. Um, but basically if it re-sprouts, then I'll be able to utilize all those little sproutlets to propagate and make new, make new plants. All right. So we got our little Rotella Ramasaur here. It does get a little bit of algae growing on it, so I'm gonna pull that off. Oops, dropped it in the tank. That was silly. I'm all like, yeah, let me get that algae out of here and then accidentally drop it back in the tank. Which one is that? Oh, there it is. Cleaned it up a little bit. I'm not gonna go too crazy. There's a chance of really damaging that little bit of plant that I got. All right. So we're back with that plant. And we're gonna go ahead and plant it right in here. Let all those roots go down. And to be honest with you, if if we're unlucky, it dies. If it's a normal world, this will grow. This one right here will grow. And if we're lucky, we'll get a, a additional sprouts to send some new stems up uh, from that little stump that's there. Because we do have a lot of root there, so we do have a lot of potential energy from the plant to be able to send out um, some new stems with leaves to photosynthesize, so we shall see. Think of it this way, like if that plant was out in nature and something came along and ate it, right? Chomped the whole top of it off down to the little stump. And if it just died, then that plant would really only last like, what, one season? <laughs> because something will come along and eat it and then it would never exist after that because it would, if it just died, it just wouldn't be around anymore. Um, so if you think about it, in nature, like maybe you mow your lawn, right? Um, and your lawn just grows back. Even though you knock a lot of the top of it off, it just grows back because it's just like it was being eaten by a cow. Same kind of, same kind of principle here. Um, it's just like if something came by and fed on it, and um, it just like triggers it to regrow. So hopefully get lucky, and moving these won't completely screw them up. But sometimes you just got to take that chance because the tank is just getting overrun with stuff that's kind of growing in the wrong position you know and the reality is like I'll put stuff like right by the front like this um, that's an expensive plant even though this might not where it's gonna be long term and the reason I do that is it's just monumentally easier to keep track of like you know if it's doing okay or not you know if I need to make some changes to the tank or you know, the lights or the fertilizers or whatever, CO2. Um, I can do that 
when, you know, I can see what the hell's going on, you know. If I had some stuff in the, way in the back of the tank, like, I've got some Bacopa back there right now that, like, came completely uprooted and was, like, just floating around the other day, um, which is weird, but I'm not worried about Bacopa, like, floating around, and, you know, even if I had like a couple pieces of bacopa die off it's like it's not like it's a rare plant that's hard to get more of you know it wouldn't be that big of a deal it would suck but wouldn't be like a huge ordeal like man i gotta get new bacopa gotta fly to gotta fly to thailand and you know the reality is like I found a good deal for this Rotella um, Ramosaur. And I got three stems of it for like 35 bucks maybe. I think that's what it was. It was like, I think if you bought one stem, it was 20. Yeah, maybe it was three stems for 40 or something like that. But they're normally like 25 bucks a stem basically. Um, so definitely not a cheap plant. And you know, the reality, behind that is is that it's not the easiest plant to just grow a ton of it so it takes a long time to grow some of it therefore it gets the rare moniker and becomes expensive okay so this last little bit that I got to do today is the Alternanthera Renekii, this is that mini. Um, not the Rosanna Vig, but this is just the mini varietal, which some of it's growing mini, some of it's growing tall, some of it's growing skinny. It's just doing a lot of weird stuff. Um, and I think it's just really like, to be honest, I, I think it's just in a lot of competition. Uh, with the other plants that are right around it and uh, that is not necessarily treating it very well um, but needless to say um, I think for now it's going to be my best bet just to keep it here and I'm realizing that I'm going to stick that there temporarily I'm realizing that I got some styragyne that's like Busting in here all crazy like let me take this piece and stick it over there Go live over there, buddy Yes, I'm not sure if I'm gonna replant Let me just Pull that out Is that a dead shrimp? Oh yeah. Who possibly have a dead shrimp in here? Bizarro world. Man, that sucks. I guess this is turning into a uh, how to rip out styragyne out of the way little tutorial. Just replant it over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Hair like roots. Fine roots coming up, coming up to the surface, which I'm gonna have to pull this crypt. I'm done setting up a tank. I'm actually gonna stick that in a specific tank, so I'm actually just gonna leave it there for now. Uh, nothing to do with it right now. I take it out, it's just like, um, I got a plant in my hand. 
know where to put it. You gotta be cognizant of that, you know, like, sometimes you build up all these plants, you know, and then they, like, you have to have somewhere for them to go. Yeah. But, you know, there are far worse things in the world. That's for sure. Count your blessings. You're blessed. Actually, I'm gonna pull this stock out too. I'm not liking that. Alright. Okay, right there. I'd like to have them in just like a nice little bunch down here. I think next week I'll probably trim this part and replant that. And of course, like, who's this? What are, what are you doing? So, go ahead and pull that one out. You guys hear my tools clanging around whenever I stand up? Kind of funny. Come on. What's that? This guy's feisty. Feisty little plant. Alright. There we go. Cool, cool, cool back up on this portion actually cut back all this public stemming right here um, I think yesterday maybe the day before all these sprouts will come back and then uh, kind of getting to the point where I should probably trim back some of these base stocks and stuff but hopefully the Renekia will fill that little gap in right there and we're good to go welcome to the end of the video thank you for watching I very much appreciate it if you got all the way here kudos if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. If you're not a member, become a member. If you haven't hit the like button, do the like button. If you haven't checked out our Patreon, go check out the Patreon. It's, this channel is funded by viewers like you, and if we don't uh, keep that rolling, eventually I'll have to... Uh, I'll probably have to go take uh, Fry Cook Position 2. I feel like I'm qualified for Position 2 over Position 3, so... I might have to go back to being a fry cook again. So, you know, thanks guys. I appreciate it 100%. And I'll talk to y'all later. Later.